Yo, it's Mike here. Today we're talking live streaming, we're talking about putting together a semi-professional production, uh, a conference, a gala, an award ceremony, something of that sort. With the first pick in the NFL draft, the LA Rams select Shannon Sharp from Savannah State, Georgia. We're looking at vMix and how data sources can dynamically interact with it. And we'll have some simple but pretty cool examples with Excel. We're going to look at a draft and a bike race, and we're going to keep track of the things that are happening on screen in a pretty simple way. Okay, so for our first example of when we'd use a data source, we have some footage of uh, me biking during a study abroad trip in Peru. I created a uh, Tour de Peru graphic using the GT title designer uh, in here and it's just a list of the folks in order of our positioning at the beginning right and Ginny is about to pass me so if I wanted to update that and remember we have live viewers watching this race that's how I would do that not too bad right and now it's updated Ginny's in first place Mike is in second all is well but I knew she was going to pass me in advance right and it was just one of her. How about here when Matt all of a sudden starts gaining and I'm like, oh crap, maybe I should change that and put Matt in second and move Mike to third. And then I'm going to close that and right when I do, I'm like, what is Tyler doing? I think he's third now. And Mike is fourth. And wait, calf, which Matt again? Because this is calf Matt. And that was Dad Matt. Um, we called the one with the huge calves, Calf Matt. It's not sustainable, right? You can't keep doing this in a live event and be timely and accurate. This is a great time to use data sources. And the first thing you're going to need for data sources is a data source. So I have this spreadsheet here. Um, pretty simple. Position and riders, right? Um, the position and, and who's who the writer is. So we're going to add a data source to this title. I'm going to go to manage, click this plus Excel or CSV format and navigate to that file. And then we can rename it. I'll name it data two since I already have one in there. And then you're going to tell it vMix is looking to that file for data. And down here, you're going to tell it how often to do that. The default is every second. Um, I want it even, I mean, I want it every 100 milliseconds, right? The less latency, the better, and go ahead and close that. And now I want to go to first, this is first place, and I want to tell it to get its data from data two. I want you to look in the biking sheet, and I want you to look at um, column two, row two. And, and why are we doing that? Because if you look here, column two is riders and row two is first place, Mike, right? Um, go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to do that for second place. Data source. Um, data source, data two, biking, column two, row three. It's already there. Jenny, perfect. And then I'm going to do it one more time, so on and so forth. Okay, I've now updated the data source for all the positions. I have this time thing that I put here. And for that, we can actually just start a count, you know, a timer, right? That's just going to keep track of people's times. And we're good to go. We're going to open up our spreadsheet. And as Ginny passes me, I drag her up to number one. I hit save and it's updated here. I mean, a lot easier to do, right? And here... We know Dad Matt's about to pass me. I'm going to move him up above me, save, and it's updated. I know Tyler's going to do the same at some point, so I move him now, and I wait, and I wait, and I wait, and when he passes me, control, save, and it's updated right there. Tyler's in three, Mike's in four. We know Kath Matt is about to do the same, so I already moved him, and save. Much easier to do, much more dynamic, um, depending on how much data you're dealing with and, you know, and how many things you have going, you could actually 
have this be a networked file of some sort where someone else is manipulating it or or another software or API call or things I don't fully understand are, are, are feeding that data. Okay, now that we understand how data sources work with vMix, with that more simple example we did, uh, we're going to do something much more fun, an NFL draft. Um, it could be an NBA draft, and I really hope someone takes this and does a fantasy football draft. I think that'd be cool. I don't really do fantasy anymore, but if I did, this would be fun. If, if you do a draft, I will watch it. So first, we're going to look at my data, right? That's the most important thing. I have a table here. Once I clear the filters, um, I have a table here of NFL players. I got this online. The NFL actually put it out for some competition. Um, and, you know, with some basic information, position, entry, year, height, weight, college, so on and so forth. I wrote two macros here. Um, and so we'll pick Malcolm Jenkins. And this macro, when I click draft selection, it takes his information and puts it up here. Malcolm Jenkins now becomes our selection, his position, everything like that. And if, if I have an image for him, it'll take that. Otherwise, it'll take this default uh, profile image that I have here. The second thing I have is an, a draft order, a pick, team, and record, right? Um, pick 1.6 is first round, sixth pick. 3.4 is third round, fourth pick, you know. And I didn't put all the teams. I put like eight um, and made up fake records um, for the previous year. So essentially, you would start at... So we'll take next pick all the way to, yep, okay, one and one, perfect. That's our first pick, first round. And we're going to clear out this draft selection. And when nothing is selected, it says on the clock. Well, the pick comes in, the LA Rams take Jeremy Macklin. Remember Jeremy. Um, and they draft him. His information goes there. And as you would guess, it pops up over here as well. I will, I'll go ahead and overlay that over here so you guys can see what that looks like. All right, the LA Rams have made their selection. So we're gonna go to next pick and clear this info out. I could have made a better system for that, but it's an example. Okay, round one, pick two is the Minnesota Vikings. So why don't we actually pick the Minnesota Viking? Uh, I spelled Adrian wrong. Adrian Peterson, AP all day. Click that, draft selection, and it updates over there. And of course, I actually took the time to put in the custom image for AP. Otherwise, it would have shown that one. Um, you know, people react to it, the analysts talk about it, and then, well, that's over with. Um, draft, next pick. On the clock are the New York Giants, right? New York Giants need a receiver, so they take my guy Larry. Larry Fitzgerald, draft selection. There's his information. Um, so on and so forth. I, I only put in information for a few people. And oh, of course, we're not. I'm excited about this next pick. I uh, this information is was a few years ago, so it's only for certain players, but um, Shannon Sharp was not in here, of course, because he's retired, but that's Unc, that's, that's, that's Uncle Shannon, you know, I had to pay respect to Unc, Club Shay Shay, uh, put him in there, Super Bowl winning goat right there from Savannah State, um, so I had to put some respect, that, I mean, that's about it, right, um, the picks would come in, you would make the selections and you would have all this data loaded right the key is having your data organized and loaded and we'll just take a quick look at how we did that this one's already set up but again it's that it's it's the data sources right so for let's go for a player name where are we getting that we're getting it from the data source table from the lookup uh, sheet and column column B, which is column two, row two, right? Shannon Sharp. And I'll, I'll show you why we're doing that. Because remember, his name is right here. Um, B2, Shannon Sharp, B2. 
That's where we're getting our name from, right? And if we, if it was a position, okay, position is C2. So 3, 2. We'll finish that. We'll move over to position, data source. Uh -huh. No, yep, that's correct. 3 and 2, tight end. Uncle Shay Shay. I was at Best Buy the other day, and there was a whole section dedicated to streaming. Streaming games has gone up and streaming events. I can think of another streaming sector that's gone up, but that's neither here nor there. Live streaming was already booming, but the pandemic gave it a boost because we don't really have a choice right now. ESPN's not going to struggle with having to do a live draft, so a virtual draft for the first time. They'll figure it out. But there are a lot of schools, organizations, churches, you know, nonprofits, businesses, conferences that are that where this is all new to them, right? Um, yeah, they've had remote meetings, but like doing a whole gala remotely, that's kind of new. So how do you do that? Uh, but the point is, uh, this is growing, and a lot of us are trying to learn this together. I'm certainly not an expert. I just got tasked with helping out on a few of these projects, and I've learned a lot from it. So I hope this was helpful. Good luck in your future productions, and I can't wait to see what we all make. Thanks.